as real estate has gotten more expensive and more people are looking to buy homes, the buying experiences of home buyers is not all equal. They're just not all the same. Some people have been burned, and I'm talking some people have been really burned bad. If you're thinking about moving, maybe retiring, maybe you're a first time home buyer, or many of you have been limited income and you're looking to stretch your buck, or you just wanna try to make your money go a little bit further. You need to make smart decisions. This helpful video is for you. Today, we're gonna to talk about buying certain types of houses and the ones that you should absolutely avoid. Wherever you buy any house, make sure you walk the entire neighborhood. During the day, like I'm doing now, and during the night, you wanna walk the entire home, you wanna talk, walk the entire neighborhood, and you wanna have a second set of eyes who are looking out for you. A lot of people think they can use the internet and to buy a house. And the internet is a good tool. It's gonna to get you started, but it's not the Amazon buy now button. The internet just is the start. You need to meet in person at the house. You need to bring an expert with you. Even brand new homes can have a lot of issues. Well, let's start with those true stories that you need to avoid. Make sure you use your nose, not just during the day when you're walking the neighborhood, but at night. We had a customer call into the office and say, please sell this house for us because we gotta get out of here. It's terrible, they're letting methane gas out at night. This is the stuff you can't see on the internet. You need to be there in person. Traffic, now this should seem obvious, right? But the amount of traffic that's on the road is different during the day than it is during rush hour. And is it trucks or is it cars? Is it commercial traffic? The other thing that you want to think about is traffic during seasons. So is there more traffic in the summer months or is it a parking lot at certain times of the day or certain times of year? These are the things that you need to know about before you go ahead and purchase. Okay, if you're buying a house, look up into the sky and listen for air traffic because it's not just what's on the ground, it's also what's in the sky. And here's why I wanna tell you this. Even if a flight pattern changes and you think you know that flight pattern, make sure the reverse of when bad weather comes, make sure you understand where traffic, air traffic will go. And here's another example. Right behind me, there's helicopters right there. So today, I'm in an area where you don't hear it. Okay, you don't hear the helicopter traffic, but a mile away from here, that neighborhood will hear the helicopter traffic. So make sure that you know the neighborhood, make sure that you know the area, if you live there already. And if you don't, and you're buying from out of town, somebody from, and you're, you're moving to a different area, make sure you're working with someone who does this every single day and knows the market inside and out, because that's gonna save you. So even if you're in a quiet area and you're buying a house, listen, again, Listen to things like wind chimes. Is it coming from far away? When it changes direction, can you hear the wind chimes? Can you hear road traffic noise in the background? What do you hear? So when you actually see a property, it's what, what you smell, what you see, what you hear, okay? That's why you have to see it, feel it, and touch it to understand what it is. Had a lady who called and she wanted to sell her house Another one, right? The mistakes, that's why I'm trying to help you avoid these. She called, she said, please help us out, Jerry. We need to sell our house. I said, well, what's going on? She said, there's an Uber driver that lives next door. There's more noise, what's that noise, right? There's an Uber driver that's living next door and he gets off at 3 a.m. and he plays the tuba. I need to get out of here. So again, music, instruments. You know, if you're close to restaurants and shops, just think about all the things that change you might be in front of a house listening seeing feeling touching do it at different times of the day do it over time or again if you're working with an expert somebody who's in and out of the places all the time they can help you save you a bunch of steps here's another example had a a house that was sold twice it was on the internet people were asking beautiful home 
pictures are great. People are asking, why is this thing sitting on the market? Well, we knew because we were in that house multiple times. When you walk out the back door, there were two great big Great Danes that would greet you every time you walked out the back door. You could never use your, your backyard. Beautiful house, beautiful neighborhood. Look great on the internet. Multiple sales, resales. Why? Because these dogs next door, they were just right over the fence. They would, as soon as you hit the back of your yard. So again, these are the pitfalls to avoid. I wanna make sure that you're buying the right house, not the house to avoid. Now, when you're doing your research, make sure you do all your research online, but make sure you follow up with tax records and other things. An example of this is the house that sold five times in five years. Why? It was about, about a block and a half from the fire department. Sounds like it's not a big deal. Guess what? Every emergency call, fire department took off. That was that. And remember what I was telling you about the helicopters? Listen. I don't know if you can hear it or not. It's coming, it's getting closer. Right? You don't wanna be in a house that's upside down. Now, when you go to look at a house, make sure you have your glasses on, not your rose colored glasses, but realize what's really going on around the area in that, not just the house, the area. You know, go there when it's raining, not just on a sunny day, because if you look here, look at where parts are low. Look at where high parts are, okay? And look at where water drains to, because water is always gonna go into the low areas. So you wanna make sure it's not in a flood zone, and you wanna make sure that your, uh, where water will collect, because if it has a retention pond, where's the outflow to it? You know, follow it along to where it actually goes, because if this outflow doesn't go where you want it to go, you could be in trouble, right? It could back up and you got it right in your backyard. So again, make sure that you know flood zones, make sure that you know different areas. Certain times of the year, certain things are gonna get, you know, rainy season, that sort of thing. Your house could be high and dry and you're not in a flood zone, but coming to, like access to it. We know of communities, for instance, I'm gonna give you this example, I'm taking my glasses off that where you can actually get in and out, not in a flood zone, but the roads coming into, you know, you're basically gonna get flooded out because those roads get flood. So make sure that you know the area or, it, you know, the, the flood map, not just the property is in the flood map, but what's around it in the general area. Make sure you know that. Utility easements on a parcel or a property, on the land that you're building a house or even on the property. And then this one's pretty easy because it backs up to utilities, right? But some of them are not as easy because you gotta actually go to the courthouse to look on a plat to see where it's recorded. Look for the dotted lines, make sure you know this, or make sure you get a copy of the plat. And our agents and our team, we usually get a copy of the plat, the flood map, the zoning, all that stuff we get up front. But Make sure you know this before you get into negotiations because I'm gonna give you an example of a property where a guy bought a house and this was a neighbor, it was our client, but a neighbor of his in the same neighborhood had to move his fence. He put up a fence in his backyard, fenced in his backyard, had his dogs paid for that. The homeowners association approved it, yet he had to move it because there was a utility easement. So make sure you look at the deed covenants what's recorded at the courthouse and the plat. You wanna avoid those pitfalls. Those are the houses that you wanna avoid. Now, a lot of people wanna live off the grid and I get that. They wanna be away from people, I understand that. But do yourself a favor. Make sure that you know where the hospitals are because none of us is getting any younger. You may need some kind of a hospital uh, situation and make sure you know the rating of that hospital. It's not just a facility, okay? Because here, I'm giving you an example here. Some people say, I wanna be, you know, an hour away from the beach. Okay, that's fine. But if you're an hour away from the beach, you may not be close to shopping. You might have to spend time to be close to shopping. You may get off the grid, you, then you gotta start worrying about your security because police and all the other services aren't there. So think things out. It's an idea, but I want you to think things out. 
hospital-wise. The reason I'm telling you this is not just the hospital, but the rating of that hospital. For instance, we're the number seven. We have five hospitals here. So your you know, specialties, one hospital is a heart hospital. We're number ranked number seven in the in the United States in heart hospitals. Look, if you got a problem, it's probably the best place to be rather than to go somewhere else where you're not going to get any service. So think those things through before. Again, what to avoid, what to look for, what to avoid. Now you may see houses that are close to water, like this lot. There's a little bit of water on the back side of this lot. So who has access, you know, you may see that there's water there, but do you have access including the water or do you have access right up to the line? Are you, you know, you, you see canals, you see ponds, you see lakes, this sort of thing may be on an area, but do you have access to that? So those are the things you wanna check with if it's in a community, who maintains the bank? Can you use the water? What are the rights to the water? Can I go fishing? Can I put a boat in? Can I, can I uh, use that water to irrigate? These are all questions, again, that you wanna consider and what to avoid. Because if those are things that you're expecting to do and you don't have access, make sure you do your research up front. All right, look, guys. This next one is important. I'm a real estate agent. I'm advising you to use one. But if you are not going to use a realtor and you're going to be working with a for sale by owner or a rent by uh, rent to own home or even you're looking on Craigslist or, you know, one of those many websites that are out there where there's houses for sale and it looks official, you know, make sure the house you're buying is actually being sold by a legitimate seller. Um, as buyers get more desperate to find a house, and especially at a, a decent price, the scammers start coming out and, and they wanna take advantage, right? You can even go through the entire buying process of a contract and you think you bought a house or you're purchasing a house and only to find out, you know, when tax season comes around, you don't own it or you never did. Or, you know, they're asking you for deposits or for all these other things, and then you never get that loan. So just be careful on, on what it is. So, you know, the best way to do this, if you're looking online, is to check public records. You go in, check specific address, a lot number, a parcel, you know, uh, and, and make sure the person that you're dealing with is the real owner. You know, the deed will always be in the owner's name, and as a broker, Guys, I see the pitfalls every single day, and I'm, so I'm asking you, please, don't get burned. Please, don't get burned. So some buyers, uh, they, they wanna go directly to a builder, for instance, new home, and they wanna cut out the real estate agent. Well, there's two problems with this thought. Number one, the person, if you watch some of my other videos about buying new homes, the person who's sitting in the model home works for that developer. You know, They're not working for you. Uh, there's a small disclaimer, a small little sign somewhere in that office that's required for them to say that they're not working for, for you, that they're working for a developer, and what that actually means. Um, but you may not see it. And number two, here's the second thing. Every builder um, does not always say what they say they're going to do. You know, even the big ones. Um, and honestly, many unsuspecting buyers walk in, they'll plop down a big deposit, you know, wait for a house to be built, and it never happens. Uh, we, we saw this guy, he came into our office because he had lost a deposit. Um, he had put his money down on a developer, a builder, and he kept coming back month after month after month to see if his property, his house is there. He's got a lot, uh, no work being done. And so eventually he just got out of the contract. He let the developer take his money, and unfortunately, this is the point that I want to, you know, that you, you plop a deposit down on this. If you're not represented, just making sure you know what's in the contract because um, many unsuspecting and unrepresented buyers will put down a deposit, you know, no work done month after month. And then knowing which builder will give you the best value and actually stand behind their work if something does happen, you know, deliver on their promises uh, with and without any problems, and that's what we're talking about. Um, it, it's it's you know the builder um, is hoping an unsuspecting buyer walks away because they'll just collect these deposits. And I've seen this happen over and over, especially in a in a tight market. Um, there'll be excuses after excuse. You know, if it's a non-refundable bill uh, deposit, the contract reads that they have two or more years to produce a home. So watch out. Uh, the devil's in the details. 
You know, recently, we found out even that one of the big builders wasn't paying his help. Um, he had some issues there. Um, but knowing this before you get involved is the big deal. That's why my team knows what to look for and what to stay away from. We even have developers who come to us for off-market homes. You know, these are the non-MLS. The you know, when you look at these types of properties, you're not competing with other buyers. They, you know, why am I telling you this? So you can see the difference. You know, if if my team has sold thousands of homes, we want to continue to sell thousands of homes in years to come. And and local and national builders love us. They want a, a good long-term relationship, but many times our buyer clients will get perks that otherwise they may not have received, as opposed to one buyer walking up to buy one house one time. So if you can see the difference, I just want you to understand what it is. So wherever it is that you're buying, uh, do yourself a favor. Set an appointment with the local real estate expert. Going to be a huge shortcut for you, and you're going to gain a lot of knowledge because that's you know basically pick their brain. Last thing I want to talk about here is not last thing, but one other thing is HOAs restrictions, city and state zoning and overlays and overlay maps. You know, just because you own a house uh, doesn't mean you can do whatever you want. You know, you got to look into what you can do or what you can't do. Um, and, I, and I just want to make sure that you're aware of all those things before you get in deep. And we get, like in our team, we'll get deed covenants, meeting minutes, current budget, flood maps, all those things to our buyer clients. So we just want to make sure that, you know, you're involved and you know what you're getting. So uh, if you want to know more about buying houses or condos and, you know, what to look for, what to stay away from, I have over a thousand videos here on this channel. Uh, and my real estate team wants to help you avoid the things that are costly. So... I know you have questions and, and we have answers. So wherever you are, whatever you're doing, I hope you're having a great day and we'll see you in the next video. Take care, guys.